we talking about larceny, burglary, and robbery for tonight. So, starting off with larceny, I already have the elements written down here. I'm gonna go through it one at a time and explain what each and every element means. And when you take your law exams for criminal law, remember, you need to define what the element means, explain why the defendant committed each and every element, and then make a conclusion on whether the defendant is culpable or not. So the first element is the trespasser retaking. Is when the defendant purposely takes and gets a hold of the property that does not belong to him or her. That's what this element means. Second element is carrying away. When the defendant has hold of the property that is not his or her own and even moves it slightly, it can be inches. It doesn't have to be a situation where the defendant takes the item from the plaintiff and carries it off to his home, his or her home. It does not have to be that far away. It can even be inches. When we get to the third element of village property, pretty self-explanatory. That the property does not belong to the defendant. The defendant purposely took the property of another. The last element with the specific intent to permanently deprive, PD, permanently deprive, is the defendant had the intent within his or her mind to permanently deprive the other person of that property that belongs to them in order to keep it for themselves, okay? So in a situation like this, an example, a perfect example of this is when people shop with from stores. Technically, the possession is of another belonging to the store, okay? The defendant is making the trespassery taking of the item from the store, carrying it away, which in most situations the store wait until wait until the uh, person walks to the, the front doors and then that's when they arrest the person because that is the carrying away piece of it that they're looking for to ensure that is this person actually shopping or is this person shoplifting? And when they go through the, the sensors to the front doors, pretty obvious that you know, they made a big mistake or they're shoplifting, okay? So we go to the third element of another's property, self-explanatory, the store's property. Lastly, with the specific intent to permanently deprive, okay? The defendant actually had the intent within their mind to permanently deprive the store of that item they are attempting to steal, okay? At the same time, the, the, um, the uh, example I just gave is attempted larceny. However, let's just say that the person really gets away with it. They actually take the item from the store, okay? The trespassery taking, the carrying away piece of it, belonging to the store, and they actually permanently deprive the store of that item they're trying to steal from. That is an example of a larceny. So let's move on to burglary. But it's slightly more complicated. However, knowing what larceny actually means will sort of, sort of make yourself understand what burglary consists of. I'm gonna talk about the common law version of burglary so you're able to understand what it meant when it was first established. And then we'll get into the modern law version of burglary, which is applied today. So I'm going to put burglary right here. And I'm going to put in parentheses, common law. But there are certain elements to burglary, just how there are elements to larceny. So burglary is, I'm write them all out right now.
All right, everybody. So we get to the first element, which is the breaking, which means that the defendant actually makes the breaking within the dwelling house of another, which actually means where someone gets a crowbar, for example, and that person sticks in the window of the person's home and uses it to jam the window open. That's a breaking because the crowbar is an extension of the defendant's body. So even though the defendant didn't physically use his or her hands to allow the window to open, the crowbar acts as an extension of their body. Thus, a breaking still constitutes in this element. That's what the breaking means. When we get into the entering, simply meaning that the defendant successfully enters the house of the, of the plaintiff or the victim, whichever one you want to use. The third one, which is very critical in understanding the difference between um, common law and also modern law, is the dwelling house of another during the night time. I don't want to write down the whole thing because I don't want to take too long with the elements. So this third element is very important because it has to be a dwelling house of another. It can't be a store. It can't be an office. It can't be a school. It has to be a place where someone actually sleeps. Their castle, per se. And it has to be during the nighttime. Sunset to sunrise. It has to be during the nighttime. If it's not during the nighttime or during the house of another, this element will not suffice. All right? Lastly, the defendant must have the specific intent to commit a larceny or a felony therein. I put L for larceny or a felony therein, okay? The defendant must have the plan before he or she makes the breaking, entering into the dwelling house of another and during the nighttime to commit a larceny, which we just talked about, okay? And also a felony therein, it could be any felony. As long as they have the requisite intent, the felonious intent, the defendant is culpable of a burglary during, in the common law, all right? When we think about the modern law, the modern law is basically the same elements except the dwelling house of another during the nighttime, those elements are not there. All we need is the breaking, the entering, and lastly, the felonious intent. The dwelling house of another is not there anymore. Or the nighttime, that's not there anymore. That's modern law. So for example, if my friend Riley, I say Riley a lot in my examples, but he's a crazy guy. So if Riley, in the common law, under the common law, if he makes a breaking and entering into my apartment during the nighttime with the specific intent to steal all that I have, he would be culpable under the common law. Okay? Let's say I have an office. Let's say I'm already an attorney. Let's say that I have a big office that I have where I keep all my stuff in. Let's say that my friend Israel wanted to go in there and he wanted to take all my all my cases. Let's just say that. He makes a breaking and entering. And as long as he has the specific intent to commit a larceny therein, to take my cases therein, he'll be liable under the modern law. Because there's no need for me to, or no need for him, I mean, to go into a dwelling house and there's no need for him to commit during the nighttime. It could be during the daytime too. It doesn't matter what time it may be. As long as he commits a breaking and entering with the specific intent to commit a larceny or felony therein, within the structure. I feel like that's the key word that I should have said. It's structure. It could be a building, a school, or my office. Whichever one he wants to uh, break into, he will still be liable for burglary. Those elements will satisfy him. Okay? So let's move on to uh, robbery. Robbery up here. Robbery, in my opinion, is very, very simple. It's a first degree enumerated felony underneath the common law. I'm gonna put the elements right here, okay? 
First element, larceny. He went through that. In the immediate presence. Okay, so when we talk about law, um, excuse me, we talk about uh, robbery. There needs to be the intent to commit a larceny. We talk about that. So larceny supra. When we talk about element two, is in the immediate presence of the victim. So the defendant must have the intent to commit a larceny against the victim in their immediate presence, which means it's the, it's the old classic example of the robber wanting to steal from the old lady and the old woman tries to grab onto her purse. However, the robber successfully steals the purse through force and also through fear because the robber more than likely scared the old woman. For example of that. So that's what robbery is. It needs to be a larceny, check. There needs, it needs to be in the immediate presence of the victim. So in the victim's actual physical presence. And lastly, there needs to be force or fear, okay? A force or fear, simply either your violent act towards that victim or yourself using a knife or a gun to use force or fear to successfully commit your larceny. If you don't successfully commit this, it could be attempted robbery, it depends. In law, everything is very gray what will happen. So that's robbery. Hope I end up uh, explaining everything correctly to you and you end up understanding the material a lot better. Because this is all critical, not only for the common law, but also for modern law when it comes down to daily life and even on your law exams. Thank you.